Today, let's look at a really nice problem from a Princeton University math contest. So let's suppose that we've got a natural number n so that the first two digits of two to the n and five to the n are the same. And then our goal is to determine what those digits are. But maybe before we get started, it's not immediately clear that such an n exists. And that's because the first value of n occurs at a large enough number that it would be hard to check in a contest setting. That being said, with Mathematica, I produced a fairly large list. And so I found some nice structure into this list as well. So the first number where this occurs is 98. But then if you add 93 to that, you get the next number where this occurs, which is 191. And then the next is 294, but that's 103 away. And the next is 387, which is 93 away. And the next is 103 away, which is 490, and so on and so forth. So I guess the question here is, is there a pattern with this addition of 93 versus 103? And in fact, there is, but I think it's maybe hard to write down. Maybe like I challenge you to find a nice pattern for this addition of 93 versus 103, which will allow us to write kind of like a formula for all values of n where something like this occurs. Of course, proving that that's all values of n where something like this occurs is probably pretty difficult. Okay, so that being said, well, there are values of n where this occurs. Let's see if we can prove what the first two digits of each of these expansions are. Okay, so let's get into our solution. So let's suppose we have some natural number n such that the following is true. So 2 to the n is equal to, well, the first two digits are x and y, and then after that is just like a bunch of stuff. So I'll just put a box right here, just meaning all the rest of it. We don't really care about that. And then 5 to the n starts in the two digits x times y and then ends in a bunch of stuff as well. Of course, that stuff that these end in will not be the same. Okay, and then, well, we want to figure out what x and y are, or maybe what the two-digit number x, y is. So let's introduce that notation as well. So let's set m equal to x, y. And I mean digit x, digit y. So this is a two-digit number. So I guess we should say that m is this number which is between 10 and 99 because it's got to be two digits. Okay, so next up what we'd like to do is get a handle on the size of these trailing digits. So let's suppose in the 2 to the n expansion, there are k trailing digits, so after the first 2. So in other words, there are k plus 2 total digits. And then let's suppose in the expansion of 5 to the n, there are l trailing digits. So again, there are L plus two total digits. Okay, and then let's see if we can use that to get an inequality into the situation. And in fact, we can. So notice that M times 10 to the K. So this is gonna start in our first two digits, X, Y, and then it'll end in K zeros. So let's write that down. We've got K digits, which are zeros. And then let's look at the next one. So in other words, m plus one times 10 to the k. And that'll start with a two digit number. We won't know exactly what it is. It's zw. And that's because there might be carrying in the addition here. And then another k digits of zeros. So let's put those here. So k digits of zeros again. But importantly is that this m plus one times 10 to the k, since zw is strictly bigger than xy, will be strictly bigger than two to the n. Okay, well that means we can sandwich our two to the n between these two. Okay, so let's do that. So we've got two to the n is strictly less than 10 to the k times m plus one and strictly bigger than 10 to the k times m. 
And we know these inequalities are strict because powers of two definitely don't end in all zeros. I think that's pretty clear. Okay, so there's that inequality. And then we can grab a really, really similar inequality dealing with this five to the n. So that'll give us five to the n is strictly less than 10 to the L times m plus one, but strictly bigger than 10 to the L times m. And that's exactly in parallel to what we did with that power of two. Oh, but now let's notice that if we were to multiply two to the n and five to the n, we would get 10 to the n. And then we would have powers of 10 all over the place. And maybe that would be easy to work with. So let's do that. So in this kind of arrow here, we're just gonna multiply those inequalities straight down. So that'll give us 10 to the k plus l times m squared is less than 10 to the power n, which in turn is less than 10 to the k plus l times m plus one squared. But now we'd like to get a handle on the size of m squared and m plus one squared. So let's note that m is definitely bigger than or equal to 10. So that means that m squared is bigger than or equal to 100. So I think that's pretty clear just because m is bigger than or equal to 10. And then m plus one is less than or equal to 100. But that means that m plus one squared is less than or equal to 100 squared or in other words, 10,000. But now we can replace this term with, let's see, this thing with the green star next to it, and this term with this thing with the purple star next to it, because the inequalities are like going in the right direction. And that gives us simply an inequality of all powers of 10. So we'll have 10 to the k plus l plus two, because 100 is 10 squared, is less than 10 to the n, which in turn is strictly less than 10 to the power k plus l plus four. Great, and again, that's just from doing that replacement which I just described. But now taking the log base 10 of both sides and using the fact that that's an increasing function, that gives us this inequality k plus l plus two is strictly less than n, which in turn is strictly less than k plus l plus four. So look, we've got two natural numbers that flank n that are two units apart, but then n is also a natural number. So that means that n has to be the one right in between. So in other words, we have n is equal to k plus l plus three. Okay, so let's maybe use that. Let's take this case that n is equal to k plus l plus three, and we'll plug it back in up here. So we'll replace the n, this n with k plus l plus three. And that motivates me to divide that entire inequality by 10 to the k plus l, because we see a factor of 10 to the k plus l everywhere. But that'll give us m squared is less than, let's see, 1,000, which in turn is less than m plus one squared. But then taking the square root of this, we can argue that m is equal to the floor of the square root of 1,000, which is easy to calculate to be 31. If you're a little bit intimidated about how quickly we can calculate that, well, let's notice that 32 squared is the same thing as two to the five squared. In other words, two to the 10, which is widely known to be 1,024. And that's gonna be the first perfect square above 1,000 because you can easily check that 31 squared is less than 1,000. So that makes this argument that m is equal to 31 a little bit clearer, hopefully. Okay, so there we did it. We found these first two digits given this condition. And also we had a nice starter kind of open question about the structure of the ends that make this possible. Maybe post in the comments if you figure out some structure to those values of n, and maybe even more interestingly, if we can prove that those indeed do generate all the ends that make this occur. And that's a good place to stop.
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.